Greetings and salutations to all of our fine podcast audience members out there. Welcome to episode 133. <gasps> we made it. We did, and uh, we made it with, with snacks. Charity, well, one of us has snacks. Ed's over here, and, and I apologize to those of you who are listening, but you're going to hear some crunch and Not bag for long. I'm almost done. Ed's eating uh, some cheese puff stuff. No, nope. well, yeah, pirate's booty. <laughs> I don't like the name of that. <laughs> it gives me all kinds of bad pirate's images. Pirate's booty. Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't eat something called it's a pirate's aged booty. white cheddar, rice, and corn puffs. Well, all right. I don't. I don't know where they get the pirate's I booty from, either. but it's something. So I'm currently right. trying to maintain a certain level of calories. My wife has asked me to. And maintaining calories? Uh, well, a certain not, level. Not reducing calories. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's reducing. Okay. <laughs> wow. All right. So, uh, how are the oh, pirate these are, booty these cheese These are puffs? delicious. Well, good for you. Enjoy, enjoy that. I'm almost done. Almost done. Continue with what you're doing. We're so sorry. He is almost done. So uh, you you won't have to put up with that much also, longer. Also, I'm trying to eat at certain times. Okay. That's and why here we are at in, your eating in time. In my eating time. I, I have to be fed like a little baby. Well, I apologize for filming a podcast during your eating time. <laughs> so, Well, we are, uh, we're are we here, like I said, episode 133. If you're new to the podcast, my name's Jason. This is Ed Crunching, and Nathan's over here. We are... Uh, the teaching team at Community Christian Church here, and we are answering your questions, helping you think more like Jesus. And uh, that part of the podcast right there was the was the ridiculous, <laughs> often unfunny banter. And when you hear the question asked uh, that we're going to answer today, you're going to find out that this is the portion that somebody doesn't like. Oh, probably not just somebody. <laughs> no, no. We know, we know there are many people who do not enjoy the... I'm not sure the, that I enjoy well, it. Well, so, I think you do enjoy okay. it. Okay. <laughs> If he says he doesn't like it, he doesn't well, like I guess it. that's true. I didn't say I did or didn't. I'm just saying I'm not sure. Well, he's thinking about I'm it. Questionable. Then. I noticed you didn't participate in the pirate's booty conversation. I, I did not trust myself. Yeah. <laughs> so you were just observing it. I kept myself quiet. So uh, that was I, a dangerous line. So back to the question. I love this question about because pirate's booty. No, the oh. question we're going to answer here today. I love it because of the honesty. Um, this is what the person said. I'm just going to read the first we part of the question. We have the most honest podcast we audience. We do. They're awesome. And I like the fact that they can just say this. Question says, questioner says, I listen to all the podcasts. Wow. And if I'm being honest, I don't like that early part where you guys <laughs> joke around. And I say, thanks for telling us. Doesn't mean we're going to stop. Because it's just who we are. Yeah, well, if we're being honest, we're not going to stop. Well, and, and I forgot they said that. And then the very next sentence, they said, I'm not saying this to tell you to stop. I'm Thank saying you. it because it goes to something that people have told me about myself for a while. And then they get into their question. Mm. So the fact that they don't enjoy our ridiculous uh, opening banter that we often do around here, uh, okay. they want to have they want us to answer a question about that. So here's what they say most people say about them. Most people tell me I am not a joyful person. I'm trying to follow Jesus. I have been for many years. I think I'm loving and that I have peace, but I'm not very joyful. So I wonder if there are practices that I could do to help me enter into the joy of the Lord. And then final comment. I do want to say I love that you all share yourselves personally on the podcast. I feel like I get to know you in ways that I don't when you're just preaching. So good to know. Good to know. We are some goofy humans. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do not hide the fact. Yeah. Well, especially when we get all together. That's for sure. We have a good time. That's the reason I, I, I like working here. We have a good time. Yeah. If so, you were in some of our meetings, you would hear more goofiness than you can imagine. Yes. More. It's more than I often can imagine. <laughs> and I'm in those meetings. So anyway, um, but back to the question. Your question is, thank you. first of all, thank you for being so honest. And for the fact that you admit that about yourself uh, that you struggle with joy. And I'll just say this. I, I know several people that struggle, and myself, uh, from time to time. I think we all have have periods of time, but I do know there are certain, certain people that it's just a constant uh, battle for them to stay positive and to stay joyful. And often when you're a follower of Jesus, and I think this is where you're getting at your question is, there's something in us that knows that that's not the way it ought to be. And I think sometimes it often fills people with, uh, it actually is counterproductive. It fills us with more guilt 
because I'm not more joyful, and then I get less joyful over the fact that I'm not joyful. And you get into this, and I hope I'm maybe I'm describing you. You get into this cycle of how do I get out of it, and and it's just a constant negativity. Um, I, I've had those moments in life. I haven't experienced it long term, but I know a lot of people who have. So, um, so let's talk about let's be pastoral for a minute, and let's speak to uh, our our faithful podcast uh, listener and talk to them about what what our thoughts and advice are on how to cultivate and maintain joy. Because I think, correct me if y'all don't agree with this, I feel like joy is something that has to be cultivated. It's not something that just, I know people who have more joy in their life, but I do think that for most normal people, joy is something we have to work at. Mm. Do y'all feel the same way? Sure. I think probably... I, I think probably, I mean, it depends on what you mean, I guess, but I think mm-hmm. joy does come from the Lord. Yeah. So I think cultivating that, hmm. you know, it's a fruit of the Spirit, which means it is something that is produced by the Holy Spirit. It's not yes. produced by me. Yeah. Um, but I do. I, there, are, there are disciplines I do to cultivate my relationship yes. with Christ in such a way. So that mm-hmm. I think that part is yeah. a, a, a clarifying point because yep. I think um, it depends on what you mean by joy when you say you're not a joyful person because there are people who, because of their temperament and their personality, appear outwardly, they like to laugh. Mm-hmm. And there are people who don't like... To, and I mean, I know it sounds silly, but there are people, they just don't get a lot of enjoyment mm-hmm. out of things that are very funny and that's not how they do. Yeah. But I don't know that that... So when I first heard the part of the one of the evidences that I'm not joyful is I don't like your banter. You may just think we're not funny. Yeah, that's right. You may, that's right. And, that's right. And, and there is a difference between being joyful and enjoying silliness. Exactly. Sure. We we yes. are we are often silly. Mm-hmm. And I think and I think even just like I don't like comedy movies or I don't like to yep. I don't like to go do that. And I'm not saying that's what you're saying. I'm mm-hmm. saying that's what your question said. And yeah. so I'm responding to that's that. That's right. Part. That's right. If what you mean by joy is a constant sense of well being. That, mm. that 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 it is well that all things will be made well you know and that that all manner of things will be well and i know that deep within my soul that even when things don't feel well and even when i personally don't feel well i know at my core mm. so when i think of people who i know are joyful they are people um whose whose core foundation does not get rattled and does not get shaken. Uh, you know, when we talk about, and we talked about this a while back when we were doing the book of John, of uh, Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Mm. There's a difference between I find situations troubling and my heart is troubled. Right. That I can look at a situation and say, even feel fear or sadness or disappointment, but still exist, joy still exists in the midst of that, because I know in the in the end of all things, uh, that that all things will be made well, and that Christ is making all things well, that He is a sure foundation. Um, and so, if it depends on what you mean by joy, if what you mean yeah. is I wish I experienced, because there is a biblical uh, value to things like cheerfulness. That's the yeah. Proverbs talk a lot about having a cheerful heart. That I would say is even a little different than joy. That there's a level of that I as a person. I think gratitude sometimes. Yeah, I was going to talk about that. Yeah, I think gratitude is a way that helps me to cultivate these kind of things. Mm-hmm. But those things, I would say, I am, I, I, I am Mister. Everything has a distinction. I, I think those are a little distinct from joy. They're similar. They're, they're sometimes a You're byproduct right. of joy. Uh, but yeah. joy is, is this. It's just a sure foundation. Um, well, I think it's important to get a good definition. I think you've given, mm-hmm. you've given a really good definition of it mm-hmm. because. I do think people confuse joy and happiness. Me too. And joy and lightheartedness. That's right. Uh, and cheerfulness. All of those things are seen as joy. I know there's a person I know that most people really see as very, very cheerful. And I know they see that often when she's actually very sad mm, sure. and struggling. Uh, but she's capable of looking very cheerful in yes. spite of that. Yeah even though she might not be experiencing joy at the moment. And in fact, I know she's not often. And um, I I think we just have to get a really good definition of what joy is. To be joyful is 
I always, it's a, it's a, an assurance that all things are going to be okay. There, mm -hmm. It's a, I think it's when one of Dallas's book or somebody else, maybe Warren Wearsby, that which is another name I haven't thrown out in years, that uh, talks about joy is like, um, <clears throat> it's like a buoy in the water. It can be. A push buoy. A buoy. buoy. I said, you said a boy in the water. Well, I, I mean, thought uh, just a boy hanging I out. Mean, I, I meant a buoy, yeah. uh, a buoy in the water. It can be pushed over, but because of the yes. ballast that situates it, mm -hmm. it always will come back up because it knows yes. that there is a ballast at the bottom. And the ballast, there's. we have to figure out what it means because the joy of the Lord, we're told, is our strength. Yeah. And most people don't think about the sense of being silly or... That is being a strength, and that's because that's not what it that's means. Not what it's it's about. not yeah. what it's talking about. Yeah. And I do think for certain personalities, it's hard to be silly. Yeah. And uh, that. But you can not, still have joy. That's right. Without not, the lightness or the that's silliness, right. because that's right. as you said, it's it's more of an anchor. That's it's right. A foundation. Because there's a difference in a person um, who always can fall back on that assurance, like you said, that all things are well. That's that old song, It Is Well With My Soul. Right. No matter what's going on around me, I have this anchor, and I can come back to it. I can rest on it, and I can be okay in that moment. But then there's this thing of where that that either shifts or for a time it just goes away for you, and right. you just can't seem to get it. That's and right. now I feel like I'm speaking a little more on the counseling side of um, of where this kind of goes because there there comes a point where there are states you're going to go through in life and many people do where you can't find the anchor mm. and if that's what you're talking about as far as joy and you can't no matter what anybody says or no matter what you uh, are reminded of or what you read or what you do you just can't find that foundation anymore that anchor um, I would say to you Please get some help because yeah. there it, there is a sense where everyone should at least be able to eventually come back to right. that. That's right. And if you go for a long period of time and you're unable to do that, it could be a sign that you're experiencing some kind of clinical or maybe some uh, chemical de depression, mm -hmm. and that that's not good for you to go into long term. Um, you need some help with that, and it and it's solvable too. Yeah. It, Yep. It, it is treatable. It can be helped. There are ways. There's, if it's not, you know, therapy, um, there are other, you know, medical things that Absolutely. can be done to help you on that. So I don't know if the person who asked this question, if that's the kind of joylessness that you're talking about, but I thought it was important to speak to it yep. just in case that's what you're experiencing. But if it is just one of those things where you would say, well, I'm just, I don't enjoy humor very much, or I, I, I think negatively a whole lot. Um, I wouldn't say that I would condemn all of that, like you guys have been saying. Right. There's some people that enjoy it more than others. Right. But there does come a point where if you're just not a positive, if you can't find anything positive about just about oh, anything, sure. that's a that's a, also a spiritual issue well, I, I had that a person, needs to be dealt with. So. Yeah. I had a person recently talk to me in, in person. Mm -hmm. there, uh about the fact that somebody had confronted them recently that they know they're a Christian, this other person's also a Christian. Mm -hmm. This particular person who was speaking to me is a very fearful person. Mm. And the person said, you know, at some point the joy of the Lord has to show up in your life. Yes. And I said, well, they're right. You know, there is, there is a point where if fear is guarding your life and you can't leave your house or you're always afraid something's going to happen with people you love, and you hear every news report, and it it drags you all over. You're tossed back and forth by every wave of mm -hmm. the sea. Yeah. You, you don't have that ballast in it. You've got, to, you've got to get back to what would focus you on that, that ballast. Yeah. And I can, I can remember, um, and this is a practice that I've been teaching a lot of people these days that I talk to, it's something that was taught to me when I was in a, like I said, I've, I've had periods in my life where I couldn't seem to find the good. I couldn't seem to find the positive. I knew there was an anchor there, but eh, I just couldn't connect with it. And I, I had to do some active things that, mm -hmm. that refocused me to kind of lead, lead me back there. And one of them was, uh, well, there's two really that I think are important. Then you've already mentioned it, Nathan, is gratitude. 
um, there is a practice of gratitude that you have to actually physically do every single day sometimes to get back into your life. I've taught people to do this. If every day, just start a journal and sit down and write five things and, and, and try not to repeat yourself and do this for a period of several weeks. And you'll be amazed at the things that you can find that you are truly grateful for, things that were gifts given to you by God or blessings that you have in your life. And, if, and you keep that and you just read back over it Sometimes you just lose sight of all the good things right. in life. So that's one. The other one um, that my therapist actually taught me one time was he said, I want you to spend every single day looking for opportunities to give people compliments. Right. Mm. And I actually taught this in a series we did on, um, on anxiety uh, mm. several years ago. Um, and he said, I want you to find five opportunities every day and you give a compliment out loud to another person. And um, I hated it. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I hated it because I had to. But the but what what the genius of that practice was is I had to look for it because right. I don't you don't naturally just see and speak a compliment to a right. person all the time. And so I was having to I got to get my five in today, and it was sort of a chore in the beginning. But as I began to do it, I started realizing there's a lot of, of good around me. Right. And if I start speaking it to the other person, and then the cool thing is people so respond to that right. and they, re and, and it brings a connection between you and people. And it just kind of, it, it just brings you up to That's when right. you, when you're below that level of, of joy, you know, it kind of gets you to the surface of the water, uh, so to speak, right. to use that analogy. So, um, those are just two things that have helped me. Uh, if, if we're just talking about a, a low level version of just melancholy and negativity, those are a couple things that will help. Well, and I, I would say, and I'm, I think Nathan wants to say something too, of you may need to rethink your version of what the Lord wants out of life. I know that mm -hmm. there are certain versions of Christianity mm -hmm. where anytime you're not deadly serious, God's probably displeased. Uh, yeah. I used to joke that I grew up in one particular church we went to when I was young that if, if it made you happy, it was wrong. Mm. You know, and particularly on Sunday, I mean, you know, Sunday was the Lord's Day, and we we couldn't do anything on Sunday. You couldn't watch a ball game. You couldn't play with a ball. You couldn't do anything, uh, you know, on Sunday. If it was fun, God was against it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are people that begin to think that way, and that's, that cannot be true when you look at all the beauty and a little bit of, there's just things in the world that are just fun fun to watch. I mean, you watch yeah. animals interact with each other. You watch <laughs> things and it just, it, there's some fun stuff happening in the world that we don't have much to do with. And God created all that. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think even in, in our rethinking, so I, yeah, I fully uh, agree with what both of them have said, and especially about the practices. I think there are things that you can do. They're just practical steps. And maybe, and maybe even some that you figure out for just your personality of this really, this is where I feel ungrateful. This is where I feel um, maybe maybe sad or frustrated by life. But um, one thing I think that it, I encounter a lot, and I'll say with people of my generation, but I, I know older people who deal with it as well, which is um, this is not the life you would have chosen for yourself mm. if you could have chosen a life. Mm. And you were very bitter and ungrateful. And, uh, and I'm not saying that in a judgmental way. I'm saying in a way of I think we all get there. I think the, yeah. uh, you know, we call it the American dream. Um, but um, I, I recently uh, was listening to a talk by, uh, I mentioned my last Stanley Hauerwas was talking about um, the problem of um, the way that we think of freedom in our country is um, that we think what freedom is, is that I should be able to live the life that I would have chosen before I had a life. Not the one I was forced into. Mm -hmm. Not the one I was born into. That if I could have somehow beforehand gone, and I'm going to be a rock star, or I'm going to make this amount of money, or my kids will be like this, that what how I measure how good and enjoyable my life is, is did I get to that life that I created in my head, not based on reality, based on what I really want, what I saw somewhere, what I'm comparing to. And what he talked about is since we think that's what freedom is, we, we measure our life Based on that, and he told a story about um, this this man who 
uh, ended up going to Oxford at one point. He grew up on a on a farm, and he, his whole family were shepherds. And uh, and he would work all day on the farm, and then at night he would read because he just loved to read and he loved to learn. And he ended up getting to go to Oxford. He graduates from Oxford, and he gets all this stuff, and he chooses, I'm going to go back and be a shepherd. And he said, um, the whole point of the book, he said, by the, the last chapter of the book is he ends with the last statement of, and this is my life, and I would choose no other life. And he says, to most of us, the point and what many of us want for our kids and what we want for ourselves is that I'd be a farmer and I'd get them to Oxford and they go be something else. Mm. And the fact that he would choose, this was my lot in life. I grew up with farmers. I'm going to be a farmer. And this is where God wants me. And this is a great life because I learned to love God and I learned to love people. And so many people I meet, their base level of unenjoyment in their life is, I was supposed to be something else. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to get something else. My kids didn't turn out the way. My marriage isn't turning out the way I want. And that's, we were talking about this on a previous podcast that we filmed today, where that's the point he makes when he says, we feel like we shouldn't be held accountable. I didn't know marriage was going to be like this. And had I known it, and that's why we're going to get a divorce. Because I didn't know it was going to be this hard. And I don't have to be in a marriage that's this hard. Or I didn't know parenting was going to be this hard. My kids, and I'm just going to keep nagging at them and keep pushing at them. And I'm not saying that this is for the person who wrote this. I'm not saying that that's what I took from it. But I know many people, maybe some who are listening. And I know I find myself some sometimes that way. We look back on these missed opportunities. And, oh, I sh maybe I should have gone that path. And yeah. maybe I should have done this. And the idea is, this is the life you have. And a true, and I heard uh, Ronald Rollheiser, who's uh, a theologian, one of my favorite quotes of his is, the truest measurement of a person's spiritual growth is how grateful they are. Mm -hmm. That when a person gets to a place where they realize everything I have has come from my father, why would I ever complain about what I have? Mm -hmm. And he says, when I get to a point in life where I say, and that isn't to say that we don't cry out when things sure. are hard, but it's to get to a point and go, this is the life I have, and I would choose no other. And don't you think that part of this, I, you just made me think of this as you were talking, um, I think part of our modern uh, problem with that, or the reason our modern world struggles with this so much is because we have so much exposure to other options yeah, sure. in life that we, we are constantly, I know it's true for me, are constantly comparing my life and my lot to what, it, what else is out there or what I see someone else having. I was, it makes me think of, I'm getting ready to, um, to lead a, a, a gathering of some parents coming up uh, in this week. By the time you listen to this, it will have happened. But I'm getting ready to do this and teaching them on how to make the most of their time with their kids. And as I'm preparing this lessons that they're going to be learning, I start thinking back on my life and, the, and my kids are, are getting ready to leave the house. And I start to mourn all of this. I should have done more of that. I'm teaching them to do that. I didn't really do that very well. And so I get to the point where, and, and by the time I got done preparing for this class, I had talked myself into being the worst dad on the planet. Right. Uh -huh. it, I had that conversation inside of myself and the joy that I had as a dad <laughs> was gone. Yeah. And I realized, I stepped back from it and I realized, I was like, but look at what did happen. Look That's what right. look what you did have. And certainly your kids didn't turn out perfect. No kids have turned out perfect, including you. Right. And so when I get it. But my point is the, the, the curse of comparison, the curse of seeing what could have been robbed me of what really was. Yep. And I, that's what I hear you saying is this. And I don't, and again, I don't know if that's where you are, the person who asked this question either, but I would certainly think about it for a moment. Yep. It certainly could be a stealer of your joy. Well, and I, I so I, I'll say this, and I don't, I don't know that I have anything to add that hadn't already been, other than I, I was thinking back to the question, and the person mm -hmm. said, "I've been a follower of Christ forever, and people tell me I'm not joyful. Mm -hmm. I think I'm a loving person." Mm -hmm. We well, you know that whole, the fruit of the spirit. There are people that think it's just a description of love. That love is joyful. Love yeah. is patient. Mm -hmm. Love is kind. Love is all those things. They aren't one in addition to that. If you truly are a loving person and you know you're giving yourself away, just because it doesn't come out in the way that other people think should be joyful, mm. you shouldn't you shouldn't be judged by that. Sure. You, well, you, I'm, I'm good with you asking. I appreciate you asking us the question. I don't know, because I don't know who asked this. 
I don't know you well enough to, to let you totally off the hook, but you know, sometimes other people just have expectations for us mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily things we should accept. We shouldn't just take those on board just because you think I should be a certain way. If you truly are a person who you love God and you're pursuing him and you are loving to other people, like you're giving yourself to other people, all the fruit that God wants to develop in your life, he is developing. I, can, well, I believe that. Because to your point, our strength is not our joy. It's the joy of the Lord that right. becomes our strength. Yes. And I think, that's, I think that ex externalizing of it is what's important because, and I think this even goes to some of the stuff we were saying earlier of, and I, I, we were just talking about this on the Family Movie Night podcast about something we were talking about, and I said, one thing that's important to get to our kids that they understand that feelings are temporary. Mm -hmm. Feelings matter, and, and they're important, but they are temporary things. But the decisions I make have consequences that are that are sometimes forever. Yeah. And what ends up happening sometimes, and I think this goes even the thing we were talking about of where it becomes more clinical or where it becomes more chemical is when that feeling is not temporary mm -hmm. or I start to really feel like I can't get myself out of this feeling, that may be the point where I start to go, mm -hmm. oh, I need some actual, I need some right. help because this is beyond the feeling, this is something else. Right. But often... What the joy of the Lord is, is when I can go, no matter how I feel, mm -hmm. I'm going to do loving things, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be patient, and I'm going to find strength in the fact that the Lord is with me. Yeah. And that's what I meant by, this is the life I have. It may not have been the life you, ch you chose. I remember I, when I used to help guys with, um, uh, well, and I still do in some ways, but with lust and, 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 and sexual related things, I said, it is really important that you don't have an ideal woman in your head uh, because you married someone. <laughs> uh, you chose to marry someone. And it doesn't matter what the idea of phys physical type is to you because this is the marriage you're in. <laughs> yeah. And for you to have any other thing in your mind but that's where some of us get. And we think we can do that with our own bodies, that I can have a physical, there's a physical ideal that I have to reach. There's a career ideal that I have to reach. And there's no joy in that because that is a consistent and it's ever changing. It is like, as James says, a wave tossed on an ocean. Yeah. You are just back and forth. It changes. There's always someone more beautiful, someone better. But when I get to a point where I go, you know what? God is pleased with me. And that we say that now in our benediction, and it changes at times, but that your, your greatest joy would be the Father's abundant delight in you. That what if every day I woke up and I said, I'm not feeling it today. I don't want to get up. And I, I'm really frustrated with my kids. I'm really, I don't like the state of my life. But the Father is delighted in me. Mm -hmm. And that His joy is enough strength for me to do what I need to do. And like you said, then when I go through my practice and I go, what am I grateful for? I'm grateful that I got to breathe today. Yeah. And I'm grateful that the Father is delighted in me. And that is a strength that I have even when this is not necessarily the life I would have chosen. Uh, this is the life I have. And it doesn't matter what I feel. It matters what I decide to do. It matters what I, what I do in this moment. I can feel. And that allows me not to judge my feelings. That allows me not to look and go, because some of us feel that way. Why am I not joyful today? Why am I not waking up super cheerful? And mm -hmm. I should, you know, I should be, they need a dad who's super ready and excited. And I don't have to judge those things. I can feel however I feel because I did what I was supposed to do. That's sure. right. That's right. Yeah. So final words on this. Um, as, as I said before, I want to say it again. Thanks for the question. Mm -hmm. Thanks for mm -hmm. the honesty. We certainly appreciate it. And I really enjoyed it having this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, having said all of that, if any of that resonated with you, especially the part about, you know, I get what you're saying. I can't find it. I can't pull myself out of it. It's a perpetual thing and you, you've struggled long enough and nothing has seemed to work. Um, you probably do need some help. Yeah, and, yeah. and so if that's where you are, you may not be, and I pray that you don't, that you're not, but if you are, please reach out to us. Yep. Um, yep. In fact, send me an email. Yep. <laughs> send. Uh, I would love to talk to you about it. Uh, Jason at community-christian.net. 
And um, I would love to talk with you about maybe some more of those strategies, maybe getting you into a, a, a counseling environment where you could talk through some of this stuff because there might be some joy stealers in your life. There could be uh, internal conversations that you're having with yourself that you need somebody to help you get out of the spiral. Um, and you, and there's no shame in it. it That's right. it's, it's a totally normal thing to do. Uh, trust me, I've done it. Been there, done that, and it's it's helpful. So uh, I I encourage you. We're praying for you to do that if that's what you need. And maybe just today was enough. And I hope I hope that as well. But if it's not, let us know. We'd love to help you more on this. So keep watching. Uh, we will keep being silly, and you can always keep fast forwarding to the silly part. <laughs> that's right. So enjoy that. All right. So we're done for today. Uh, we'll be back next week with another question. It'll be a surprise because I don't know what it is, but I know, I know there's a list waiting on me in my office, so I'll be looking at those. And you guys keep sending them in. There's a link in the description as always. Let us know what you're inquisitive about, what you want us to talk about, and we'll certainly get to it when we can. So y'all have a great week. See you next time. Bye-bye.